Welcome to the Daily Bible Reader Podcast. I am your host, Rakia Collins, and the mission of this podcast is to read the Bible from beginning to end every single year, starting in 2024. If that mission sounds interesting to you, I'd encourage you to grab your Bible and read along with me. And on today's episode, we are going to be discussing Exodus chapter 29 through 31. So picking up with Exodus chapter 29, consecration of the priests. Now this is what you shall do to them to consecrate them that they may serve me as priests. Take one bull of the herd and two rams without blemish and unleavened bread, unleavened cakes mixed with oil and unleavened wafers smeared with oil. You shall make them of fine wheat flour. You shall put them in one basket and bring them in the basket and bring the bull and the two rams. You shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Then you shall take the garments and put on Aaron the coat and the robe of the ephod and the ephod and the breastpiece and gird him with the skillfully woven band of the ephod. And you shall set the turban on his head and put the holy crown on the turban. You shall take the anointing oil and pour it on his head and anoint him. Then you shall bring his sons and put on coats, and you shall gird Aaron and his sons with sashes and bind caps on them, and the priesthood shall be theirs by a statue forever. Thus you shall ordain Aaron and his sons. Then you shall bring the bull before the tent of meeting. Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the bull. Then you shall kill the bull before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting and shall take part of the blood of the bull and put it on the horns of the altar with your finger and the rest of the blood you shall pour out at the base of the altar. And you shall take all the fat that covers the entrails and the long lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them, and burn them on the altar. But the flesh of the bull and its skin and its dung you shall burn with fire outside the camp. It is a sin offering. Then you shall take one of the rams, and Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the ram, and you shall kill the ram, and shall take its blood and throw it against the sides of the altar. Then you shall cut the ram into pieces and wash its entrails and its legs and put them with its pieces and its head and burn the whole ram on the altar. It is a burnt offering to the Lord. It is a pleasing aroma, a food offering to the Lord. You shall take the other ram and Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the ram, and you shall kill the ram and take part of its blood and put it on the tip of the right ear of Aaron and on the tips of the right ears of his sons and on the thumbs of their right hands and on the great toes of their right feet and throw the rest of the blood against the sides of the altar. Then you shall take part of the blood that is on the altar and of the anointing oil and sprinkle it on Aaron and his garments and on his sons and his sons' garments with him. He and his sons shall be holy and his sons and his sons' garments with him. You shall take the fat from the ram and the fat tail and the fat that covers the entrails and the long lobe of the liver and the two kidneys from the fat that is on them and the right thigh, for it is a ram of ordination, and one loaf of bread, and one cake of bread made with oil, and one wafer out of the basket of unleavened bread that is before the Lord. You shall put all these on the palms of Aaron and on the palms of his sons, and wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. 
Then you shall take them from their hands and burn them on the altar on top of the burnt offering as a pleasing aroma before the Lord. It is a food offering to the Lord. You shall take the breast of the ram of Aaron's ordination and wave it for a wave offering before the Lord, and it shall be your portion. And you shall consecrate the breast of the wave offering that is waved and the thigh of the priest's portion that is contributed from the ram of ordination from what was Aaron's and his sons. It shall be for Aaron and his sons as a perpetual due from the people of Israel, for it is a contribution. It shall be a contribution from the people of Israel, from their peace offerings, their contribution to the Lord. The holy garments of Aaron shall be for his sons after him. They shall be anointed in them and ordained in them. The son who secedes him as priest, who comes into the tent of meeting to minister in the holy place, shall wear them seven days. You shall take the ram of ordination and boil its flesh in a holy place. And Aaron and his sons shall eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket in the entrance of the tent of meeting. They shall eat those things with which atonement was made at their ordination and consecration, but an outsider shall not eat them because they are holy. And if any of the flesh for the ordination or of the bread remain until the morning, you shall burn the remainder with the fire. It shall not be eaten because it is holy. Thus you shall do to Aaron and to his sons according to all that I have commanded you. Through seven days shall you ordain them, and every day you shall offer a bull as a sin offering for atonement. Also, you shall purify the altar when you make atonement for it, and you shall anoint it to consecrate it. Seven days you shall make atonement for the altar and consecrate it, and the altar shall be most holy. Whatever touches the altar shall become holy. And this is what you shall offer on the altar, two lambs a year old, day by day, regularly. One lamb you shall offer in the morning, and the other lamb you shall offer at twilight. And the first lamb, a tenth measure of fine flour, mingled with a fourth of a hen of beaten oil, and a fourth of a hen of wine for a drink offering. The other lamb, you shall offer at twilight and shall offer with a grain offering and its drink offering as in the morning for a pleasing aroma, a food offering to the Lord. It shall be a regular burnt offering throughout your generations at the entrance of the tent of meeting before the Lord, where I will meet with you to speak with you there. There I will meet with the people of Israel and it shall be sanctified by my glory. I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar. Aaron also and his sons I will consecrate to serve me as priests. I will dwell among the people of Israel and will be their God, and they shall know that I am the Lord their God who brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord, their God. So what we see here in chapter 29 is essentially God giving Moses instructions on how the priests are to be consecrated before they go into his presence or in his sanctuary. And I don't want to take for granted the fact that everyone knows what the word consecrated means. Consecrated means to have been made or declared sacred a thing or a person that is in the sacred sphere set aside for a specific purpose. And so when we think about these priests, they are set aside. The priests, not just their garments, but the human beings themselves, they were chosen from the tribe of Levi. They were set apart for this specific purpose. And so when we think about things, and we're going to hear this term commonly in the Bible, 
of consecration, it essentially means to set something apart, to make it holy, to make it stand by itself because there's nothing like this thing or there should not be anything like this thing. And now we have Exodus chapter 30. Exodus chapter 30, the altar of incense. You shall make an altar on which to burn incense. You shall make it of acacia wood. A cubit shall be its length and a cubit its breadth. It shall be square and two cubits shall be its height. Its horn shall be one piece with it. You shall overlay it with pure gold its top and around its sides and its horns, and you shall make a molding of gold around it, and you shall make two golden rings for it. Under its molding, on two opposite sides of it, you shall make them, and they shall be holders for poles with which to carry it. You shall make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold, and you shall put it in front of the veil that is, above the ark of the testimony. Every morning when he dresses the lamps, he shall burn it. And when Aaron sets up the lamps at twilight, he shall burn it. A regular incense offering before the Lord throughout your generations. You shall not offer unauthorized incense on it, or a burnt offering, or a grain offering, and you shall not pour a drink offering on it. Aaron shall make atonement on its horns once a year, and the blood of the sin offering of atonement, he shall make atonement for it once in the year throughout your generations. It is the most holy to the Lord. The census tax. The Lord said to Moses, when you take the census of the people of Israel, then each shall give a ransom for his life to the Lord. When you number them, there be no plague among them when you number them. Each one who is numbered in the census shall give this, half a shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary. The shekel is twenty jiras, half a shekel as an offering to the Lord. Everyone who is numbered in the census from twenty years old and upward shall give the Lord's offering. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than the half a shekel when you give the Lord's offering to make atonement for your lives. You shall take the atonement money from the people of Israel and shall give it for the service of the tent of meeting, that it may bring the people of Israel to remembrance before the Lord so as to make atonement for their lives. The bronze basin. The Lord said to Moses, you shall make a basin of bronze with its stand of bronze for washing. You shall put it between the tent of meeting and the altar and you shall put water in it with which Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet. When they go into the temple of meeting or when they come near the altar to minister to burn a food offering to the Lord, they shall wash with water so that they may not die. They shall wash their hands and their feet so that they may not die. It shall be a statute forever to them, even to him and to his offspring throughout their generations. The anointing oil and incense. The Lord said to Moses, Take the finest spices of liquid myrrh, 500 shekels, and of sweet-smelling cinnamon, half as much, that is 250 and 250 aromatic cane, and 500 of kasa, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, and a hen of olive oil. And you shall make of these a sacred anointing oil blended by the perfumer. It shall be a holy anointing oil. With it, you shall anoint the tent of meeting and the ark of the testimony and the table and all its utensils and the lampstand and its utensils and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils and the basin and its stand. You shall consecrate them that they may be most holy. Whatever touches them will become holy. You shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may serve me as priests. 
You shall say to the people of Israel, This shall be my holy anointing oil throughout your generations. It shall not be poured on the body of an ordinary person, and you shall make no other like it in composition. It is holy, and it shall be holy to you. Whoever compounds any like it, or whoever puts any of it on an outsider, shall be cut off from his people. The Lord said to Moses, Take sweet spices, stachit and anicha and galbium, sweet spices with pure frankincense, of each shall there be an equal part, and make an incense blended as by the perfumer, seasoned with salt, pure and holy. You shall beat some of it very small, and put part of it before the testimony in the tent of meeting, where I shall meet with you. It shall be most holy for you, and the incense that you shall make according to its composition, you shall not make for yourselves. It shall be for you, holy to the Lord. Whoever makes any like it, use as perfume, shall be cut off from his people. Exodus chapter 31 Aholiab and Belzeel. The Lord said to Moses, See, I have called by my name Belzeel, the son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge of all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones, in setting and in carving wood to work in every craft. And behold, I have appointed with him Aholiab, the son of Akishma, of the tribe of Dan. And I have given to all able men ability that they may make all that I have commanded you, the tent of meeting and the ark of the testimony and the mercy seat that is on it and all the furnishings of the tent the table and its utensils, and the pure lampstand with its utensils, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offerings with all its utensils, and the basin and its stand, and the finely worked garments, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons for their service as priests, and the anointing oil and the fragrant incense for the holy place. According to all that I have commanded you, they shall do the Sabbath. And the Lord said to Moses, You are to speak to the people of Israel and say, Above all, you shall keep my Sabbaths, for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I, the Lord, sanctify you. You shall keep the Sabbath because it is holy for you. Everyone who profanes it shall be put to death. Whoever does any work on it, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days work shall be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall be put to death. Therefore. The people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as a covenant forever. It is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel that in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave to Moses when he finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai the two tablets of the testimony tablets of stone written with the finger of God. So chapter 31, I think, I love the piece of this particular chapter that talks about the Sabbath, more so because of the principle of the Sabbath that I think is lost in today's time where we live in a culture where it's just grind, 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 hustle, hustle. Like, you know, you have to go for it, go after it every single day. Like, no sleep, like I'll sleep when I'm dead. Like all of this 
run and go and go and go, like that literally goes against the commandment that God has given us. And so here is where he says in verse 12, he says, and the Lord said to Moses, you are to speak to the people of Israel and say, above all, I'm going to say that one more time, above all, you shall keep my Sabbath for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I, the Lord, sanctify you. You shall keep the Sabbath because it is holy for you. Everyone who profanes it shall be put to death. Whoever does any work on it, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. The principle. People are working seven days a week, literally killing themselves, literally going against what the word tells us about work. And I am an avid, I believe in work. I I think you should work. But I also think that self-care and taking care of yourself and pausing is so important. And I love the fact that God literally says, above all, like that is what is important. It is above all, like you need to do this above all things. Why? Because God knows his people and God knows that you are probably going to work a lot and you're going to work and continue to work and continue to work and you're never going to stop. But I'm instructing you to stop at least for one day of the week. And I love the fact that this is included in here because it really speaks to God just knowing his creation, knowing the fact that we're going to want to work. We're going to want to achieve our goals, especially if you happen to be a very goal-driven person. You want to achieve the next thing in your life. You want to continue going after it. And hopefully, if you're listening to this, you are taking the time to rest. And if you are not, Hopefully you are reading this and you are thinking through the best way to include some sort of rest in your daily routine. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you found some value out of this content. If you did, please leave me a rating or review wherever you are listening. This would mean the absolute world to me. And I'd love to hear from you on social media. Please feel free to reach out on Twitter at His Eternal Word, the number one. And please feel free to visit the website at www.thedailybiblereader.com. And I hope you stay tuned for the next episode.